today we're going to talk a little bit about the exciting opportunity and experience of going from a state-of-the-art university laboratory to a highly automated laboratory and the lessons learned along the way. So today we have Jody Fontenot who will join me. I'm Jerry turner Jacino. I am the Vice President of Strategic Relations with AREP. And really all that means is I get to work very closely with our clients as they work to address the issues of healthcare and improve patient care and all while reducing cost. And so today, Jody Fontenot is our Senior Operations Director at the University of Utah. Jody, if you want to join me up on the stage. Hi, thank you. Jody has extensive experience in lab operations, lab medicine, she's a medical technologist, and also the business of healthcare. And Jody was intimately involved with her team as they sought uh, automated solutions for their laboratory. And she has quite the story to tell about living through the development and the implementation of that. So Jody, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you, Thank Jerry, you. appreciate it. So good morning, it's a real pleasure to be here to share with you our story, true story of implementing automation on our hospital laboratory. So as I'm sure you're very aware that the laboratory is an integral part of healthcare and the hospital operations. Our laboratory personnel provides consulting to nursing personnel in specimen collection, specimen handling, transfusion protocols, patient identification practices, and point of care testing. Laboratory uh, results are responsible for a lot of clinical decisions. In addition to that, we provide pathology cons consultation we provide tr transfusion protocols, blood product administration, management and utilization, medical decisions on me medicine and, and dosing of, of um, drugs are often dependent on laboratory results. In addition to that, we are also in alignment with the hospital for our patient safety and quality goals. So what was our goal in implementing automation? Well, what we wanted to do is become a highly automated processing center to support our clinical laboratory. Our second goal was we really wanted to improve quality. And the way we wanted to improve quality was simplify our processes, improve our turnaround times, reduce our errors, and improve patient care. And then we wanted to improve efficiency by handling our increase, continually increase in volume and while still maintaining financial strength. So um, why now? Well, our hospital has experienced, our healthcare system has experienced a lot of growth. We've had about 10% growth in the last five years. And so in this year, they're also implementing four new healthcare system locations within our healthcare. So we need to plan and be able to have capacity to handle that growth. In addition to that, our processing department and section has to deal with a lot of complexity. The processes, they have to remember a lot, and with this continual growth, growth it's been really difficult for our processing staff to handle, and this is just not sustainable. And third, I'm sure you're all experiencing the same challenges that we are with resource management or medical laboratory scientists. And so we need to have a way to ensure that we're utilizing their, their expertise in looking at critical decisions and, and allow us to automate those processes that can be automated. But how do we get buy-in? Where did we get the executive buy-in and, and where's the money? So of course, to be able to do this, you have to demonstrate a return on investment. And, and so we really focused on complexity, quality, and, and our return on investment. But to really do that, we needed to demonstrate a need. And so we put together a lab prospectus that we um, submitted to the universities health executives as well as ARUP executives. And we really through that defined what was our need for automation. And so we, we looked at the all aspects of um, testing. We looked at the pre-analytic, the analytical and post-analytic 
processes and explain to them why, why we had the need. For pre-analytic, we needed to our, have our specimens come into the laboratory track ready. That way we reduce the amount of errors that we could occur with labeling and pour off errors. For our analytic, we needed to really focus on the, the um, staff doing the job of, of testing and allow the automation to do the, the loading and unloading of tests and samples onto the, the instrumentation. And then the post-analytic is we have a lot of add-ons and um, shared samples, and so we needed to have a way that once those specimens arrived in the laboratory, how were we going to track those specimens? And right before automation, we had a lot of difficulty knowing where that specimen was to do those add-ons. And so then we, now we know our samples will also go into storage, so we know where they are in the system. In addition to that, I'm sure you all experience the challenges that we do with space. So we're very, we're landlocked where our laboratory is, and, and due to the expansion of the hospital, they needed to take it 2,500 square feet from our, our lab. So not only are we landlocked, but we also are losing space while trying to accommodate for the growth. So automation was really the answer for us to, to be able to have capacity in our limited space. So after we demonstrated the need, then we had to also explain, so what is the benefit of automation? <clears throat> so uh, the benefit for automation is it allows us to have increased capacity to be able to handle the growth in our healthcare system. In addition to that, it, it simplifies our processes for our staff. It, and it improves quality by reducing our opportunities for error as well as in improving our turnaround times. So once we got executive buy-in, then the work begins. So how did we approach such a daunting task of implementing automation? Well, first of all, what we did is we got all our stakeholders together, including our vendor, and we um, did a, had a Kaizen event and we did a current state map of our processes, and then we wanted to design the future state to ensure that we were implementing a good process with our automation. And then once we identified what that process was, then we worked with our vendor and identified all the steps to implementation. <clears throat> and then came up with a timeline. I think one of the real successes of our project was that we um, our, our developed project teams for each of the aspects of the, the automation. So we had an IT team, we had a staff team, we had a logistics team, validation team, training team, facilities team, and, ballot and SOP team. So all those teams worked together and they each were responsible for their aspect of the automation. Another approach that we felt was very successful is that we did a risk assessment. And we actually did the risk assessment three times. So our first risk assessment was project risk assessment. What are our constraints to the project and meeting our timelines? And so then we identified what those constraints were and then uh, took steps to mitigate those, those um, constraints. Our second risk assessment that we did was implementation, so our go live, what are going to be some of our challenges and risks that we need to worry about at go live. And this gave us an opportunity then to create our statement of work that we had um, and set what, our, what we needed and expectations from our vendor and what type of coverage and support we needed at go live. So it helped us to really identify what those needs are. And um, our third uh, risk assessment that we did was post go live and what are going to be our risks once we are on automation. And so we identified every step of the process and all components of automation and from there determined what were our risks and how we're going to mitigate them. From then we were able to write our SOPs and our downtime procedures. And I think this was really key into a success of our implementation was risk assessment. And if you are implementing automation, I would really recommend to take this approach. But our real concern with implementing automation is what is this going to do to our staff? 
you know, this is going to be a difficult time for them. And our staff are so amazing. And we just really wanted to make sure that we're thinking about the impact that they're going to experience. So first of all, we needed to explain, just as we needed to get the executives buy-in, we also needed to get the staff buy-in. They needed to understand why we're doing this and what is the benefit to them. Also, there was some anxiety, worried about are we going to lose our jobs? You know, is there, you know, is there concerns there? So we really had to just reassure them that no, you know, this is really helping us to build capacity. If we become efficient, then we would deal with, with that with attrition, but that reassuring them that no one was going to lose their job. In addition to that, how are we going to help them manage that stress for the whole year, being in a cramped space and dealing with so much change? So um, what we did is we set up what they called the Automation Nation. We had like uh, travel agents from each department, we called them, that would help them work through the travel of this project. We had our marketing department helped us a lot with just really messaging to our staff. We set up blog pages. Uh, a page for them to give us feedback. Um, our travel agents were the ones to share and talk about with the staff concerns uh, that they had as well. And then we also just discussed those concerns in our huddles. And we really wanted to get a pulse on how they're doing through all of this to ensure that we're providing the support that we needed to, to get them through this, this huge project. <clears throat> so that um, so then what were some of our roadblocks, challenges, and constraints? So our first was facilities. So we didn't really, I didn't appreciate the complexity of what bringing automation into a laboratory takes. So there's a lot of facility needs, including the power, the air handling, you know, all of that, and, and just being able to support the weight of automation. So we had to put together capital requests for our hospital to be able to approve the facilities in the remodel. And then we had to have an architectural design, had to go through, uh, through approval stages, and so that delayed our project quite a bit. And, um, but once we got going through that, then, then it went rather smoothly. But the other challenge that we had with facilities is they had to get the space ready for automation, but we're still in the same space. So our staff then had to be moved into a very tight working, working condition. So it was really important that we stayed on task and stayed on our timelines for our automation project. And then our other roadblock is IT. The complexity of the IT, I can't underemphasize how big an IT challenge automation is. So you've got the hospital information system, and for us it's not the same as our laboratory information system. Then you have the software that runs the automation. In addition to the software running the automation, you have to have middleware that connects the automation, tracks what is happening with the specimen, and communicates that in to the instrumentation, and then the results and rules that go back to our LIS. Our, our laboratory information system also, we had not implemented container tracking. That's an, you have to do that to have automation. So then we had to implement container tracking across the whole organization, which then impacted all of our, of ARUP. So it was quite a few roadblocks and challenges with our IT, but we got amazing support from our vendor. Um, and we have amazing IT uh, individuals and everyone just came together and worked through the problems. But um, IT anticipate those, those are some challenges. And so we had a ribbon cutting ceremony and our track went live on June 11th and we went uh, live uh, on time. And um, it's been two, two months now, so it's uh, been pretty, pretty an exciting um, implementation. And so with that, are there any questions? Your current footprint of the laboratory, the square footage of the laboratory, are you currently today 25, is it 2,500 square feet smaller than you were prior to beginning this process? Did I understand correctly? That's correct, yes. And then, I'm sorry, I have one follow-up uh -huh. question. The sure. Kaizen event yes. 
who brought in the experts, the facilitators? Was it ARUP or was it your vendor? Yeah, okay. ARUP, you. and we had the vendor involved and our staff involved, and they were the facilitator. And then we just we got different uh, individuals throughout ARUP because of the container tracking and the impact that has. Our vendor provided a lot of input and what our current state was and future state and how we should design uh, the automation. So they were they were involved quite a bit as well. Thanks, Judy. Uh -huh. One of the advantages I have as the director, uh, VP of Strategic Relations, and working with other clients is I'm able to tap Judy's expertise and her team's expertise because we go out and do consulting engagements on operational efficiencies, things like automation, those type of things. So, Judy, you did a lot of planning with your team, and you have a fabulous team. I know a lot of your folks. What type of things did you encounter at Go Live challenges that maybe snuck up on you? Um, good question. Thank you, Jerry. Well, it, actually, Go Live went remarkably well, but some of the challenges that we had uh, prior to Go Live, especially the, like the couple weeks before, is just making sure that all the rules worked and that the, the specimens went where they were supposed to go. And we were very nervous if. Uh, we were going to make our go live, but you know, we just really had to put some pressure on our vendor and get the support that we needed and get them in house and work with our IT. So I think that was one of our, our challenges. And then just, you know, I think the biggest challenge was for our, our technical staff because they're working in one area and then they move into a new area. So everything was new for them. They had a new space. We have implemented new chemistry analyzers, so they had new analyzers, new processes, so everything was new to them. And so I think that the biggest challenge at Go Live was just our staff dealing with so much. Um, our our um, management team did a really amazing job getting adequate staffing, overstaffing, and our vendor was there 24 7 for four days at Go Live to help us manage that. But it, it, was, it was a challenge. Great. So through that process, I'm sure you learned a lot. Is there anything that you would change about the way you worked on the front end or what you did on Go Live? Y yes, I would recommend um, planning and understanding more about the IT portion of automation. Um, I've, we thought we gave ourselves enough time, but it, I would recommend making sure you have plenty of validation time with the IT. Um, one of the things that we did that worked really well is we did a mock client, so we were able to actually have a go live with a mock client, and so we could really test what it would like at go live, but um, we, we really didn't understand how the software of the track worked, and so we had to make a lot of assumptions until it was implemented. And so if there's, you know, we really, I think to look back, if we would have done something different, would have been to try to get that software in to work with, uh, with our IT folks so that they knew what we're building and how we're building our databases really, really matched well. You talked a little bit about, obviously, how do you get the money? Where does the funding come from? and your justifications. Talk a little bit about has the automation, obviously you went live June, mm -hmm. have you met some of your initial goals? And then what are you doing to track and measure against those objectives? Okay, yeah. Um, well, we're only in the first phase of our automation. So we've, we've gone live with our full lab automation with our chemistries. We're gonna be adding our hematology line uh, this fall, and then we're going to add coag. So we're not totally implemented, but some of our goals were, you know, to improve quality, reduce our errors, and how are we measuring that? And um, we've already seen an improvement. We had some challenges going live because everything's new. So um, we were really paying a lot of attention on our turnaround times, make sure they weren't slipping and hoping that they would improve. And our biggest gain was in our troponins for our ED and the turnaround times in increased immensely. And we were really excited about that because that's a, a very important test for our emergency department. So we're, we're seeing our, our, uh, our turnaround time's improving and um, our efficiencies and our staff really like it. So they've been pretty happy with it. And, our, and simplified things for our processing department.